This is one of multiple videos discussing SDN, network programmability, network automation, overlays and related technologies. Scrolling down through this document, something that you need to learn in OpenFlow is these terms. What are OpenFlow ports? So an OpenFlow port is a network interface for passing packets between OpenFlow processing and the rest of the network. But it gets a bit confusing here because they have different types of ports. They have standard ports, physical ports, and logical ports. A physical port is what you would expect it to be. It's a hardware interface of a switch like Ethernet 1 or Ethernet 2. Logical ports are logical interfaces such as tunnels, loopbacks, and link aggregated ports. So as an example, you would have two physical ports, gigabit, zero gigabit, one as an example, in a link aggregation. The physical ports would be the physical gigabit interfaces, and the logical port would be the link aggregation port. But for the real world, understand that when you put physical ports into a link aggregation, OpenFlow and the controller have no visibility of the physical interfaces. The controller will only see the logical interface. In other words, the link aggregated interface. So as an example, if you have two physical interfaces in a ether channel or link aggregation, and one of those interfaces goes down, the controller is not aware of that because it still sees the link aggregated interfaces up. Now, some reserve ports that you'll find in OpenFlow, this is where it gets a bit confusing. There are various ports, and let's start with some of the ones that are perhaps more well known. We've got a controller port. This is the channel to the controller. So in a OpenFlow table, if we've got a match and the action is to send it to the controller, basically that means we're using the controller port and we're forwarding the traffic to the controller through the TCP session. Now sessions between the controller and the switch can use TLS. So you don't have to use TCP, you can encrypt the session if you want to. Other ports that you may come across are import, so you can match an ingress port. Sorry, if traffic's coming in on port one, send it out of port two. You could match any port, which basically means we're not specifying a port. Any port can be used as a match. We can also send traffic to the normal port. That sends it to the traditional pipeline of a switch. So we're matching some kind of traffic and then we push it to the traditional pipeline. That would require a hybrid switch once again. Okay, so let's look at some of the interesting ones. We've got table. This represents a table in the pipeline. So I could say match my CMP traffic, not send it out of a port, but send it to table three or send it to table four for additional processing. Okay, so what is all? All represents all the ports on a switch. Can be used only as an output port. In that case, a copy of the packet is sent to all standard ports, but notice here, excluding the ingress ports and ports marked as open flow, no forwarding. You through an application can mark certain ports as no forwarding, which means packets sent to the all port will not be sent out of that port. So here's a question for you. Does OpenFlow require spanning tree? So if you run an OpenFlow network, do you need to use spanning tree? Okay, it's a tricky one. So let me explain it like this. The answer is, as always, it depends. If you've got a pure OpenFlow environment where the controller is managing the switches entirely, the switches are dumb, the controller needs a mechanism to stop loops. So it may have something like path daemon or daemon that um, some controllers have, like the HP controller. In that case, you don't need to run spanning tree. But with the HP controller, remember it doesn't use pure open flow. In the HP environment, the switches are still intelligent. The default action on an HP controller is to send everything to the normal pipeline. Essentially means that traditional mechanisms are still used, which means that you need to run spanning tree. If you don't run spanning tree, you'll have a loop in your topology. So notice the difference between all, we'll send it out of all ports, except where they marked as no forwarding, versus flooding. Flooding uses the normal pipeline of the switch and will send it out of all ports, except 
and there's some exceptions here, but notice here, no ports that have open flow blocking state set. So in other words, what takes precedence on a switch? Open flow or spanning tree? Again, it depends on a lot of the implementation, but generally per the open flow document, what should happen is spanning tree takes precedence. In other words, spanning tree, if it's blocking a port, will block that port and open flow packets will also be blocked. So the controller actually gets shown that that port is blocking. So the controller is aware that spanning tree is blocking that port. So hence, when you set traffic to flood or send it to the flood port, it's gonna go out of all ports, but not the ingress port or ports marked with open flow blocking. In other words, if spanning tree is blocking the port, the traffic will not go through that port. Now, something for the real world, the open flow documents get better or more understandable with later releases. So as an example, under the glossary here in this release of OpenFlow 1.5, they have a lot more information. So better explanations of what an action is or what a control channel is and so forth and so on. So if you studying this stuff or you are trying to understand something, let's say your controller only supports OpenFlow 1.3, have a look at that document because that's what the controller and the switches will be using. But also have a look at the later releases just to get a better explanation of the concepts. So you'll notice here they also talk about reserve ports and they have the same reserve ports, all controller, table, import, and so forth and so on. But there are some additional ones as well. So just be careful. You obviously need to match up the version of OpenFlow that you're using with the standard that you're reading or the document that you're reading. Okay, so open flow ports I've now explained. Now in an open flow pipeline, processing starts at the first table in the pipeline, which is table zero. It's based on highest priority. If a go-to statement is used, the traffic can be forwarded to an additional table for additional processing. For the real world, make sure that you understand what a hybrid switch is versus a pure open flow switch, or as they call it here, open flow only. Open flow only means that the switch can't do anything without the controller. It has no local processing power except just to form a connection to the controller. Hybrid means that it supports traditional mechanisms. So you can have a switch like an HPE switch or um, other vendor switches where they can use both traditional and they can use open flow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.